Hello again, this is section 10.1, which is exploring quadratic graphs. I'll explain a little bit about um, graphing um, the parts of the graph, and then we'll do a couple basic graphs. Um, I'll do a little more complex graphing in section 10.2, so we'll just do um, simple graphs for this one, and then a real, real problem as well. Okay, first thing is um, quadratic graphs. If you remember, quadratic is when it's x squared, so the term is squared, the highest degree is 2. So in this case, if I have y is equal to x squared, um, when you graph it, you're going to get a basic parabola. And I'll show you that when we do graph it. But this u slash v looking, it's not really a v, it's more of a u. It's a parabola. And the bottom point is always called the vertex. Or in this case, the top point is called the vertex. Okay, so you can see on y equals x squared, the parabola opens upward. y equals negative x squared the vertex opens downwards. So there's a couple things you need to see. When it opens upward, the vertex is the minimum because it's the lowest point. When it's a negative, the vertex is a maximum because it's the highest point. So it's like if you throw something up and it comes back down. Okay. Um, here's a couple examples as well. In this case, you're looking for the vertex. So you can see this is the vertex here. So the co uh, coordinates is 1, comma 1. And it'll ask you if it's a minimum or maximum. And since it's the lowest point of the graph, it's the minimum. Okay. And in this one, your vertex, you can see it's negative 1, 2, 3, positive 2. So it's negative 3, comma 2. And it's the highest point, therefore it's the maximum. Okay. The other thing they'll ask you for is axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is if you took this parabola and you fold it in half, where is that middle? Or it's the x-coordinate of the vertex. So in this case, the axis of symmetry would go right down the line like that. And I can see that it didn't show up. Okay, so you can see it's that. In this case, it would be x is equal to 1. Okay, when we get into linear graphing, you'll see how um, a vertical line, the equation of vertical line is x equals 1. Or you can just see over here the x is equal to 1. In this one, when you look at this axis of symmetry, if you fold it in half or where the vertex is, x is equal to negative 3. And for these parabolas that are going to go up and down, your axis of symmetry will always be x. And just for future, when we start doing graphs um, in section 10.2, when you do your xy table, what you want to use is you take this axis of symmetry here and you put that as your middle number, okay? Because that's going to be your vertex. And then you go two up and two down. So in this case, it would go negative 4, negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, okay? Or backwards, you could, sorry, go negative 5, negative 4 in this way negative 2, negative 1. And you always put this as your vertex because this will be your vertex. So that'll tell you how to pick your x's when you're doing your graphs. In this case, because it's x equals 1, I'll put the 1 here. And I'll put 2, 3, 0, negative 1. And this will be your vertex. So it'll give you five points on your graph. The vertex, and then one to the left, one to the right, another one to the left, and another one to the right. Okay, so that, again, that's just, I'll show you how to do that more later on when we do more complex graphing. Okay, so here's how we're going to do some simple graphs. So I have a big graph here. Um, if we did an xy table with x squared, just start with 0 in the middle, and then you go 2 up and 2 down. Okay, uh, if I were to input a 0 in there, I would get a 0, 0 here. And then I usually start with the positives. And if I put a 1, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. And if I put negative 1, again, it would be negative 1 in parentheses squared because when you insert a number 4 or substitute a number for a variable, make sure you use parentheses. So this would be 1. And again, same thing, negative 2 in parentheses 4. And you can see this is your vertex. And then you can see the 1, 1 and the 4, 4 correspond to each other. Okay, so I'm just going to erase that so you can see it. When you graph it, you get what I call the simple parabola. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. Okay. 
again when you graph it don't V don't make a V make sure you view it okay so five dots one on the vertex one on each side and if you miss that that's okay I understand just try and make it as best as you can Okay. I'll do the negative ones later on. So now over here, I want, to see what, I want you to see what happens if I put a number in front of the x squared. So if I put a 2x squared, if I put a 0 in there, it's 2 times 0 squared, which is just 0. If I put a 1 in there, it's 1 squared. Again, PEMDAS, you want to do the exponent first. 1 squared times 2 is 2. And if I put a 2 in there, it's 4 times 2, which is 8. And since I know this is my vertex, I know this can be a 2 and this can be an 8. So when I graph it, I go 0, 0 is here, 1, 2 is here, negative 1, 2 is here, 2, 8 is up here, and negative 2, 8 is over here. And you can see that what happens is it gets steeper faster or it gets skinnier. Okay, and if I got y equals 3x squared, it would be even skinnier. y equals 4x squared would be even skinnier because it just gets steeper faster. Okay, and here's another example with the orange. y equals half x squared. So what happens if I put a fraction in front of it? Again, I'm going to start at 0. Um, to make things easier, what I usually do is use multiples of the denominator. You could go 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. But I would do 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4. Okay, I get just multiples of the denominator. If I put a 0 in there, 0 squared is 0 times 1 half, it's still 0. If I put a 2 in there, it's 2 squared, which is 4, times 1 half, which is 2. And if I put a 4 squared in there, 4 in there, it becomes 4 squared, which is 16, times 1 half, which is 8. So you can see I get nice numbers. If I happen, just so you can see, if I put a 1 in there, 1 squared would be 1 times 1 half, and I would get 1, 1 half. And so you get fractions. So this gives you nice integers by using the multiple. And I can just say that this is my vertex. So the 2 and the 8 mirror each other. Whatever is there goes there. Whatever there goes there. Okay, and if I graph it, still 0, 0. But now if I go 2, it goes 2, 2. And negative 2, 2. And if I go 4, it goes 8. And negative 4 and 8. And you can see that when I get a fraction, it actually flattens out my parabola. It gets wider. Okay, so a number like 2, a higher number, a greater number than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, would make your parabola, parabola go skinnier. A fraction would make it go wider. So 1 half would go here, one third would be wider, one fourth would be wider, one fifth would be even wider. And so it would go that way. Okay? Um, what happens if we move it? So if we go x squared plus 2. So now we have a plus 2 on the end. So instead of the number in front of it, it's after is plus 2. I would still use the same vertex as 0. Put a 1 and a 2, a negative 1 and a negative 2. This would be my vertex. But now if I put a 0 in here, 0 squared plus 2 is 0, 2. If I put a 1 in there, 1 squared is 1, plus 2 is 3. And if I put a 2, 4 plus 2 is 6. So you can see this would be a same numbers there. If I were to graph this, I would go 0, 2 is over here. 1, 3 is over here. Negative 1, 3 is over here. And then 2, 6 is about here. And sorry, I'm going to erase the green just so we can see it a little better. And the orange. And if I go 2, 6, it would go there, and negative 2, 6 would be about here. And you can see, all I did was translate that same shape of the y equals x squared up two units. So I just took this same graph, 
and I moved it up two units because of this plus two. Okay. If it happened to be plus one, it would have just went up one. If it was plus four, this same graph would be at plus four. If it happened to be a minus one, so if you had y equals x squared minus one, all it would have done is take the same shape and drop down one. Your vertex would have been here, and you would have went up this in the same shape from the bottom. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to show you, a number in front, a coefficient in front, makes it skinnier or wider. And then a number after it, all it does is move it up and down. Okay. If I had something like this, where it's a 2x squared plus 3, it would be the same as that 2x parabola. Only thing, it would raise up 3, so it would go up 3, and then I would have went a little skinnier parabola, and I don't have the numbers, but it would have just taken a skinnier parabola and shifted it up higher. Okay, And if it was this y equals half x minus 2, half x squared minus 2, it would have been that wider parabola dropped down with the vertex down here at negative 2. Okay, The other one I wanted to show you was this negative y equals um, negative x squared. It would be the same parabola, only thing upside down. So it'd be, if I did the zero here, I would get a zero, this is my vertex. One would be one squared with a negative, so it'd be negative one. Two would be two squared, which is four, times a negative, because again, it would look like this. All you do is put the two in the parentheses, so it's negative four, which means this is a negative one, this is a negative four. Okay, and when I graph it, I would get 0, 0, which is this point here, negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 1, and then 2 and 4 would be somewhere down here, and the other one would be down here. And you would have the same shape parabola as this one just flipped downwards because of this negative x squared. And if it was negative x squared one, minus 1, you take this same one and you shift it down 1. So it looked like that same shape, only thing dropped down. Okay, so that's how you graph some basic parabolas. This one, your axis of symmetry, as you notice, is the y-axis or x equals zero. And that's why your vertex is x equals zero. You always start with the middle because the axis of symmetry for these graphs today go down the middle. Okay, one more real life situation or one life, real life problem and you can get going. So here's a formula for gravity. Negative 16 t squared plus c and c is your starting height. Okay, so if Keola jumps off the rock at Waimea and it's about 32 feet, the height of the rock, there's two different things you could say. What is Keola's height after one second or how long will it take him to hit the water? Okay, so two different ways of doing this. The first one, after one second, that means they're giving you t is equal to 1. So when you write this equation, negative 16 t squared plus 32, they're telling you that t is equal to 1. So you, all you do is solve it, negative 16, 1 squared plus 32. You substitute 1 in for your time. 1 squared is 1, so it's h is equal to negative 16 plus 32. Therefore, h is equal to 16 feet. So after one second, he's halfway there. Okay, But then gravity takes over, if you're going to notice. It'll say, how long to hit the water? In this case, you're still going to use the same equation. Only thing, now they're going to give you the height. They're telling you the height. When he hits the water, your height is 0. So this time, they're giving you the height instead of the time. In this case, they give you the time, t. In this case, they're giving you the height, 0. Okay, and then you just solve it for t. Now you're looking for the time. 16t squared plus 32. So you minus 32 from both sides. Get rid of that. Negative 32 is equal to, oops, negative 16t squared. Divide by negative 16. And you get 2 is equal to t squared. Take the square root. T is equal to 1.4 seconds, about. Okay. 
So you can see how gravity works. After one second, he's halfway there. And then it only takes another 0.4 of a second for the second half because he's picking up speed. Okay, but this is how you can do it. Just look for what they're asking for. If they give you time, then you're looking for the height. What is the height after? Whereas this one, how long is the time? Okay, that is section 10.1. I hope this helps. Hope you guys have a great day.